Welcome to the Easy Etsy Bookkeeping by Digital Dalmatian. This spreadsheet was designed to accurately and easily give you all of your Etsy numbers, not only for tax purposes, but also so you can effortlessly understand the health of your business. So in this tutorial, I will be showing you step-by-step -step on how to use your Etsy bookkeeping spreadsheet so you can see for yourself how much time and stress it can save you every single month. And if you want to skip to a specific topic that I'll be covering in this video, make sure to check out the timestamps in the description below. So let's get to it. Once you get your own copy of your Easy Etsy bookkeeping spreadsheet, the first step that you're going to see, it's actually going to be this one, start here. That is going to have all of the step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the spreadsheet, which I'm going to be covering in this video. But if you prefer to read everything, there's screenshots to show you every step of the, of the whole process. And anytime that you may not remember something or want to get more information about it, then you can come to this tab and you can check out the specific step that you're looking for. So the first step is going to be to download your Etsy files. There are three different reports that you need to download from Etsy and upload to your Etsy bookkeeping spreadsheet so it can actually gather all of the numbers for you. So I'll show you how to do that. You can come first to the um, left side menu on your shop manager, go to settings, next click on options. From here, click on the download data tab. And here we're going to download two different reports. The first one is going to be your currently for sale listings. So it's going to pull up all of the listings that you have active on your Etsy shop. You just have to click on this button right here, download CSV. I've already done that. And the second report that you need to do is right here under orders. Um, you click on this drop down menu and then you select order items. Next, you're going to select the month and the year. And if you want to just select the year, that is going to download all of the months of the, that year for, in the report. So that can save you a lot of time so you don't have to download a month by month. For example, January, February, March. However, there is a catch. Um, just make sure that if you're downloading in the middle of a month, don't use the data of that month yet. And I'll explain why whenever we're actually in, back in our bookkeeping spreadsheet. But for now, let's save time and let's do this. Order items and then click on download CSV. Perfect. You've already downloaded two reports. The last one is your monthly statements. So you're going to go here to finances on the left menu. Next, click on monthly statements. Here you're going to be selecting um, every single month. You have to download one report per month that you want to upload to your bookkeeping spreadsheet. So you have to do that to whatever month you want. So do that for January, for example, February, March, April, May, June. Again, if you're in the middle of a month, don't download it yet. I would not um, recommend. And that is because it's going to be difficult for you to find that specific transaction later on to just keep going with the following. It's better for you to, once it's August, then you come back, download all of July, and then upload. So do that for every single month of the year that you want to, to get your numbers for. And once you're ready, go back to your Etsy bookkeeping spreadsheet. And right here, I already have a filled out spreadsheet to save time during this tutorial, but I also have an empty spreadsheet that that's what you're going to see whenever you get your own copy. So right now everything's zero and we're going to be using that one to show you what you would be doing, especially the first time that you're doing this. Once you're here, the next step is going to be to upload all of these reports into your spreadsheet. So go to file, go to import, come here to upload. Okay, so the first files that we're going to upload are going to be the monthly statements. You have to do that one at a time. So you can just drag, for example, all of January here, wait for it to upload. Once you see this window, click on this drop down menu and select insert new sheet. Then click on import data. 
you're going to see that that is going to create a new tab right here in your spreadsheet. And all you have to do is select all of the data. So start here on A2 and select everything until the last cell that has a value. In this case, it's going to be the H column. So let's go all the way down. All right, from here, you can either use your keyboard for Max is Command C and for PCs is Control C, or you can right click and click on Copy. Now we're gonna go to this tab right here from your Etsy bookkeeping spreadsheet called Payments, which you're going to be doing monthly. Click on cell A4 and now right click, go to Paste Special and then click on Values Only. Perfect, so if you wanna upload the next month, you would repeat, you would go to File, Import, drag the next month, now, again, insert new sheet, then import data. Again, from aid, cell A2, select everything all the way down, then copy. And when you go back to the tab, you have to make sure you don't paste data on top of what you've already pasted. So make sure that you go to the first available cell and then you do again, right click, paste special and then values only. Just to let you know, do not paste anything beyond this. If you see a plus right here, it's because all of the formulas, all of the calculations are here. So we definitely don't want to overwrite that. So leave everything over here up to the last column. It's everything's optimized for exactly the way that you download it from Etsy. So you don't have to worry about anything. You just have to select all of the data and copy. So go ahead and repeat those steps for every single monthly statement. The next report that we're going to upload is going to be your orders. So you're going to follow the same steps, going to file, import, drag your file, same thing, insert new sheet, import data. Now remember, if you downloaded this report selecting the, selecting the entire year and you're still in the middle of the year, then it most likely you are gonna have some transactions for that month. And in this case, I would advise you to not copy those months yet. Otherwise, whenever you come back next month and you want to upload all of July's orders, you have to make sure you're not double counting these. So it's just easier for you to do once the month is complete. So I'm just going to start on this cell right here, and which is the end of June. Select everything just like we did up to the last column. There we go. We have until this column and then go all the way down. Once you've select everything, same thing, copy all of the data, copy. Then now we're gonna go to this tab right here, number two called orders. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to cell A4, if that's, this is the first time you're um, pasting everything, right click, paste special, then values only. This is extremely important for you to do this, to go to pay special values only and do that over one cell. Otherwise, you may be overriding some of the formulas. So make sure you do that. And now you've pasted everything for six months of your order data. And now the last report, and that's going to be your listings. We're gonna follow the same steps, going to file, import, drag the CSV file that you downloaded, insert new sheet, import data. This might be a little bit tricky for you to select all of the data because it does pull up all of your description. So if you have a lot of text, the cells are going to be very large. So one trick that I like to do to make sure I'm selecting everything is selecting right here, the box that contains the, the row number. So two, let's go down three. I'm just clicking on shift and then the arrow down to select all of the ones down. Three, four, five, six. Okay, we have six rows. Now right click on top of those numbers, select resize rows two to six, and then just click specific row height 21 is usually the default. So click okay. And if you scroll all the way up, now it's much easier to see all of the data. So unselect everything to make sure you're not selecting the entire row and may overwrite some of the formulas again. Click on A2 and select all of the data up to the last cell. 
So up to this one, you may have SKUs. I don't, but I, I'm still going all the way to column X. And again, copy. And now we're going to go to this tab right here that has the number three, cost of goods sold or COGS. And here it's going to be a little bit different. As you can see, it already started pulling up some of your title variations, and I'll get to that in a minute. But here you're going to be pasting the data starting on cell B4. So make sure you start on B4 and you're going to see why. So here, right click, paste special, and then values only. Perfect. As you can see, it automatically filled out the pictures, the price, and all you have to do is fill out the landed cost of goods sold. If you don't know what that is, there's a, a video right here that explains in detail what COGS is and pretty much is going to be what is the final cost before you receive that order and have to ship. Once the product is completely produced and you have them in hand, that's called lended cost, then what? how much did you spend creating that product? So all of these products for this specific account, they're digital products. For So for us, in terms of actually monetary value in, um, instead of um, time, is going to be zero. That's why we love digital products. So for us, we would just do zero. But let's say you're create. let's say this product right here were actual physical cards and not a digital file. Then I would have to see how much the paper cost, how much the printing cost, and if I had to ship it, from a specific place, let's say you're doing something in bulk and it's even producing it abroad or in another state, then what is the cost of production plus the cost of shipping until it gets to you and you're ready to ship it to a customer? So you're not counting the shipping to the customer, just all of the costs associated with getting that product to you. And the reason why this is so important is because it determines not only your return on investment, how scalable your business is. So for, let's say, for example, it costs you $4 for something for you to make, but and you're selling it for $6. Yeah, you may have a little bit of a profit, but until you sell that product, you spent a good chunk of your money into creating that product. And what if you never sell? So it's kind of like how your money is tied up to the product. And there's lots of other reasons. And that's going to help you give you the actual accurate numbers in terms of the health of your business. So as you can see right here on title variations, this, this is because sometimes when you change your title, the orders are going to pull up your brand new title. Let's say that now I want to call, I want to change a little bit of the keywords. I want to optimize my title and it used to be called bachelor Sca scavenger hunt game printable. And now I want to do Bachelor's scavenger hunt game cards. So even if you change a single S, anything, uh, if you change in your title, the order, the new order is going to pull up the new title. And that means that every once in a while, every time you come use your Etsy bookkeeping spreadsheet, you need to check this column right here. If there are any new titles, even though you already put the lender cost for that product, if there are any new titles, you need to copy, let's say right here, there was that new title, Bachelor is Scavenger Hunt Game Cards. Then it would show up here. It would not have a checkbox next to it until you copied, pasted on column B, and then gave it a landed cost. Then the checkbox will automatically appear. So once that's good to go, every single new tab that you have imported, you, you can go ahead and delete, delete them. So all of the monthly statement, you just have to right click on the tab and then click on delete. Just say, okay, and do that for every single one of these tabs. And now I'll be going back to the other spreadsheet that I already have filled out with more um, info. I have already uploaded all of the monthly statements and everything so you can understand better the numbers. And we're going to move on to the second tab right here which is going to be the profit and loss statement. But before we analyze our profit and loss statement, there's a few things we need to do. First thing, once after you uploaded your Etsy reports, is going to be to choose the year that you want to analyze. So in this case, it's going to be 2022. And the good thing is you can use the spreadsheet for many, many years. You can leave all of your data if you want from 2022, 2023. Let's say it's 2026. 
you can still have all of the data in um, your, your tabs, the payments, orders, everything, because it doesn't matter that the data is there. You don't have to clear. It's going to fetch the data from the specific year that you select here. So if you have data from 2022 to 2025 and you select 2026, it's going to be looking for that year and it's going to show you numbers only for that year. So don't worry about that. Now we're going to select 2022 and then you're going to choose the accounting method. So there's cash and accrual. And we definitely recommend accrual, especially if you deal with physical products where you're paying for something in one month and possibly selling it two months later or one month later. So we definitely recommend accrual, but it's totally up to you. And next, if you scroll down right here, you're going to start to see the summary view. We're going to come back to this to really analyze that after we have input all of our manual numbers. But just to show you how we're going to do that, first, we're going to go to the detail view right here. So in the detail view, you're going to see everything broken down. So everything that has to do with the revenue, all of the numbers that have been pulled straight from Etsy, how many units sold, the average sale price, how many refunds, unit refunds, everything is going to be showing here for you. So you're going to have, you can make very informed decisions regarding your business. But now, before we come back to it, we're going to come here to the other income sources. So if there's any other income sources that you want to add to your bookkeeping that has to do with your Etsy business, then you're going to add them here. For example, let's say you do have your Etsy shop, but you also have your own website. It's the same brand, you sell the same product, so a lot of the expenses might be showing right here, and you wanna account for everything. In terms of taxes, that is very wise because it's just one company. So here you could say like website sales. You can edit all up to five of these other income sources. So website sales, let's say now you do some local fares. So local fares. You can edit everything here. And then once you, you can also leave other ones blank as you want. And perhaps it, you're going to change the next month. The next categories that we're going to be changing. We're not going to add the values wet. I'll show you where we're going to do that. We're going to scroll down to advertising. So advertising expenses, um, it's anything that is offside off of Etsy. So you may be using Etsy ads, then that means that all of the numbers are being pulled from the reports that you've downloaded. So everything is going to be showing here whenever you have Etsy ads, including what Etsy calls Etsy offsite ads. If it's through Etsy, it's going to be automatically accounted for. But if you run any other type of advertising and there's no way for Etsy to know it, let's put it like that, then you have to come here and manually put it. So you here you can name up to five categories. Let's say you run some Google ads, then you can edit here Google ads. Or let's say you have partnered with an influencer and you can put like influencer marketing, for example, and so on. Up to five customized outside of Etsy ads fees. And the last category that we're going to be customizing is going to be the non-advertising operating expenses. So this is pretty much every single expense related to your business. Um, specifically if they are deductible and uh, more on deductible tips soon. And you're going to add them here, anything that has not be accounted for. So if it doesn't have to do with your cost of goods sold, let's say you create customized t-shirts and you already accounted for the price of the t-shirt itself in your cost of goods sold. So that's not what this means. This is anything like subscriptions, if you subscribe to software, any travel expenses, anything related to your business, you can put it here. So as you can see, we've already filled out some options that you can definitely edit over them. It's just some suggestions. And you can also add up to 10 new categories. So. This sheet is completely customizable for you. And next, what we're going to do is add the amounts associated with all of these types of manual transactions. 
So on the next tab, you're going to see that this is where you're going to track additional income sources. So first you're going to put the date. Obviously, as I said, the date is extremely important because on our profit and loss statement, the um, year is going to be looked for by all of the formulas to be accounted for whenever for all of the transactions. So put on the date, even if it's not a, a specific date where you had that income come to you, then try to like ballpark it. So date. Next, you're going to select the income source and you're going to see that now if you click on the drop down menu, you're going to see the options that you customize in the previous tab. So here you can select if it's website sales, local fares or anything else. So you can go ahead and select. Let's just say I'm going to select all of these, leave this as is, and then you can input the amounts. So let's say for your website sales, you made a thousand dollars. You go ahead and put a thousand dollars and then you have three columns and in your blank sheet, when you receive the spreadsheet, it's going to say custom one, custom two, custom three, right here. I've already customized one of them. I put notes. So maybe you want to keep some notes regarding that those specific transactions. Um, for example, um, a thousand, a thousand dollars from your website sales. You might not remember that in January you had that large order from a local team or anything like that that can give you some insight on why you had that amount if you want to keep track of that. Um, so, for example, you don't expect to every month have that same type of income because you had a one specific large order in that month. Just as a suggestion, you can, as I said, customize any way that you want up to three columns and go ahead and fill out every single additional source over here. Just use all of the rules available. Don't forget to choose your income source, put the amount, and then customize the next columns. The next tab is going to be very similar, but it's going to be for you to track other advertising expenses. So similarly, you are going to put the date of that expense again it doesn't need to be exact but you need to put a date specifically with the year that you want to account it for and um, next you are going to select the category again if you click on the drop down menu you're going to see all of the customized categories that you chose so let's see this for example okay Next, you're going to put the amount. Don't worry about putting the amount in the negative. Actually, don't. Just put the amount as it is. This is how it costs $50. You're going to see in red because it is a negative amount, but you can simply put it as you can see here. Then you can also customize the three extra columns. In this case, here are some suggestions. I put the frequency. So how often do you actually incur that expense? Do you, if it's something that it varies a lot, for example, Google ads, one month might be one total. The next month might be different. So I wouldn't really put monthly. I would put one time. Um, but if it's something like a, uh, some sort of ad agency fee, if you pay for an ad agency and every month it is $500, then you can put monthly and you already know next month to automatically add that one so you don't forget. And you can add some notes. You can put notes for accounting. So anything that you want to keep you organized with your numbers. And lastly, you're going to have the no, the next step is going to be the manual operating expenses. As I mentioned, same process here. Very, very easy. You know how to do one. You know how to do all of them. So you're going to add the date, click on the drop down menu and select your category, put the amount and customize your next three columns for whatever you want. If there's any notes, if it's subscription fees as the category, but you want more detail, like what kind of software, for example, then you can put what software and so on. Once you're done and you've input all of your manual numbers, then we can go back to our profit and loss statement and really analyze our numbers. So this is where the magic happens. Right at the top, you're going to see these graphs. There's go they're going to make it very easy for you to visualize the health of your business. So first we have the revenue breakdown. So really, where is your money going from all of the money that you made in sales plus additional income? 
So cost of sales, not only the cost of goods sold, but all of the Etsy fees, all of the fees associated with um, your, your Etsy shop is, are going to be accounted here. Advertising expenses, you can see it was a big chunk, 23%. Non-advertising expenses, 3%, obviously those are just example numbers, and your net margin. So if you start seeing your net margin shrinking, that's not a good sign. Next is going to be your ROI health. Again, ROI stands for return on investment. How easy is going to be for you to scale your business? And here you can see the meter, the red is going to be bad. That is from zero to 100. Obviously, this is personal maybe for you. An ROI of 80% is good. But in general, usually more than 100 is starting to get very good in, ter in terms of scalability. And finally, anything over 150 is great. Absolutely great. Next, and I'm going to go back, come back to this very soon, but for the graphs, you're going to see very big, your net profit or loss. So if the number is negative, you're going to see it in red. Let's say at the end, you've spent more than you made, then it's going to be minus $50. You don't type anything over here. It was just to show you, it's going to show you in red, but anything positive, it's going to show you in green. So that's the actually dollar amount that you are in the positive after everything has been accounted for. That's your net margin. And lastly, that number in percentage. So from your total revenue, what percentage of that revenue you actually were able to put it in your pocket? In this case, the numbers are great. The fake numbers of this um, tutorial are great, 70%. Next, if we scroll down, we're going to see the summary view of everything. So this is very, very helpful for you to see not only on a monthly basis, because you can see your total revenue, total cost of sales, total advertising, operating expenses, total non-advertising, total expenses, and then finally your net profit by month, as well as the grand total. So you can see maybe the month of March consistently has been sort of more difficult. You've, you've had to, you haven't had that many sales or maybe you incur more expenses during the month of March and then you can see how that can change on a monthly basis. So whenever you see gross margin, this right here, it, it means that this is not your net profit yet. So it's only accounted up to what's showing above you. So here's your total revenue, total cost of sales that are inevitable. If you're selling Etsy, you need to incur those. And then total advertising. So if it were up to there, if you had no extra expenses, this would be your gross profit. But you have other expenses. And this is particularly very important when you're filing your taxes because you want to deduct as much as possible. So you're going to put all of your additional expenses. And here is going to sum all of your expenses. So all of your negative numbers, everything that actually came out of your revenue to give you your net profit. So this is the summary view that you can see monthly with the total. And if you want more details about every single one of these categories, so revenue, cost of sales, advertising, and non-advertising expenses, then you scroll down to see more of it. So for revenue, for example, in the very first um, row, you're going to see this sort of graph. As we can see here, January was our biggest month and you can see it comparably to March or April in terms of revenue numbers. So you're going to see this throughout the detail view, all this, these graphs. So you can see the pattern, the trend that your business is going. Next, you're going to see all of the breakdowns. So Etsy gross sales, if you had any refunds, it accounts for all of the discounts, shipping income, everything. Shipping income is if the customer paid you for additional shipping when they purchased the order. Anything, all of this is being pulled from Etsy. And then you have your customized categories as we've already talked about. Then you can see your total that you also saw on the summary view. Next, for cost of sales, you can see again everything broken down month by month. And this is going to change if you choose the cash accounting method. You're going to see this differently, but for accrual, this is how it's showing. All of the Etsy fees and broken down by listing fees, 
transaction fees and processing fees so you know the percentage and where everything every single fee is going towards any fee credits and lastly total cost of sales and again when i mentioned gross margin that means total revenue minus what you just saw above it so if that was all that all expenses that you had if you didn't run any advertising and you didn't have any other expenses this would have been your gross profit your profit and you can see the graph as well next you see the breakdown of advertising again the ads from etsy and then offsite etsy is manual again gross margin and all of your manual expenses we've already talked about giving you the final numbers that you saw in the summary view at the top and finally at the very end there's also taxes associated with all of your sales so when customers paid sales tax or VAT this is all of the disbursements that occurred as well as the total on the very end but before I talk more about taxes let me just show you this awesome awesome feature that you get here with the easy ad seat bookkeeping with this feature you can actually filter all of these numbers by product so you can see which products are actually bringing your business up and maybe which products are bringing your business down you may actually be unprofitable for some of these and you may want to actually stop advertising or maybe stop selling the product or you have to analyze what it is that it's making possibly this product be negative and that's why this is so helpful so if you come right here on this button you have to click on all right now it's selecting all of your our six products of this example but here you could clear all clear everything so nothing is selected and then select just the products that you want to see so you could type here just a few words to find that product the a few words from the title or you can scroll down and then just click on it so this one for example if i click here you have to actually click ok for the filter to go through and here you can see obviously this is not the total profit of just that product because you have those additional incomes right here you it's still accounting for the additional income but if you look just right here at units sold and etsy grow sales this is just for that product so you can see here your best months your worst months for that specific product you can see if maybe someone's your negative for that so let's see another product for example if i click here again i'm going to clear everything so no product is selected let's say i'm going to do this one scroll down click ok now if i go here I can see that some months I basically had no sales for that product. And you can see it maybe if you had a lot of refunds, a lot of re units return, that, that might have been an issue. And you can analyze everything, including the cost of sales, everything, maybe certain kinds of fees were higher during that month. Same thing with advertising. Maybe you spent a lot of money on a specific product during a certain month and that made you almost net zero, you never know. So this is why it's so, so cool to be able to filter all of this by product. And if you wanna select all of them again, you can just click on select all, and then obviously click okay for the filter to apply. And we're almost done. Finally, I just wanna show you at the end, we have this tax reports. And this is going to show you the sales tax in VAT paid by customers and where exactly from the United States, which state have you been selling the most or most sales tax have been paid to you the most and also which countries internationally you have sold to the most and most customers have paid you taxes from them. So you can see a list here, a broken down list. So those are all of the states that you sold to and how much they paid in sales tax. And these are all of the countries aside from the United States that you have sold to and how much. So now you can easily see if maybe you have reached a threshold of taxes and you may be responsible for remitting taxes, whatever it is. This is absolutely not any type of legal or tax advice. You should always be up to date with the latest Etsy decisions regarding taxes. So right now, for example, Etsy automatically collects and remits 
all sales tax within the United States for 45 states. So this may change in the future and this bookkeeping is completely timeless. You can use it for years to come. And right here, you're going to see, as I said, the countries that the darker countries in them on the maps are going to be the ones that you have paid the most. And you can just scroll down to see the total amount. And even though you see negative, it's the total amount. It's negative because that comes negative from Etsy reports. And same thing with the country. So very, very helpful for you to actually have not only be able to visualize, but also have the total amounts here. Last but not least, we have a bonus, a bonus tab that we've created for you, which are the tips and resources. And on this tab, you're going to see 10 tax deductible tips. So 10 things that you can deduct on your tax returns. So make sure to read all of the description carefully because it maybe applies on just certain cases. So you have to know exactly what applies to you to be able to claim it. And at the very bottom, you're going to see our top recommended books and resources to really, really take your business to the next level. So I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. You can always reach out to us if you have any questions or suggestions about your, the Easy Etsy bookkeeping. And thank you so much for watching.